So let's start with the relationship with China, because you also have a key role in Georgia in the uh, One Belt, One Road initiative. But of course, we've got the backdrop of a US-China trade war. How does that impact your trade relationship with China? You see, so um, first of all, you mentioned so the Georgia is on the crossroads between Europe and Asia, and uh, so it means that we uh, have to deal with all our trade partners, and mm -hmm. of course, we have to perform our function, our natural role as a bridge between Europe and Asia. And uh, as you mentioned, we are part of One Belt One Road initiative since we are historically on the historical uh, Silk Road route uh, geographically, and of course, uh, with all our economic policy it was very open economic policy mm -hmm. we're trying uh, not just physically connect the markets but also to serve as a bridge between the countries and in this uh, particular case like uh, you rightly mentioned so we have a uh, free trade agreement with China yeah. but at the same time we have the free trade agreement with the European Union signed uh, in frames of association agreement and we also have the free trade uh, regime both with uh, Turkey with CIS country with EFTA countries with about 19 uh, uh, countries and uh, this provides also us with opportunity yeah. uh, to provide uh, free trade atmosphere yes. uh, to all the countries which are willing to uh, trade with each other. So in the era of trade wars, actually the Georgia is very nice, uh, nice place where there is no trade wars and where is opportunities for all the countries to bridge and to find and to meet, uh, meet each other. Yeah, um, when you mentioned the various free trade pacts you have, I noted that the US was absent in what you just said. Obviously there is the prospect of that, but yes. as your rapprochement with China increases, are you concerned that it might harm your relationship with the US? Uh, not really, because uh, what we have in the US, with the US, it's, it's not just trade relations with the US, mm -hmm. but it's a very strong strategic partnership. Right. Uh, and as you mentioned, so we also have very strong uh, Euro-Atlantic aspirations, and it's a part of our national policy as well. So when we're talking, with the Ch with, uh, when we're talking about China, so we're talking about about one of the biggest, largest markets, and of course, all of the countries of the regions are um, uh, uh, have the desire to uh, to participate in the trade relations. But of course, when we are talking about our political aspirations, when we are talking about our uh, reform agenda, of course, it's uh, looking for the Euro European and Atlantic, Euro-Atlantic every mm -hmm. year. So that's mm -hmm. much we don't think that uh, we will affect it uh, anyhow with this big uh, trade relations. So we are in the region, which is very diverse. Yeah. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, Georgia is very open, very business uh, friendly, yes. very investor friendly. And we think that we uh, we are not only providing the opportunity for these big markets to connect to each other logistically, but also to meet in Georgia, maybe. Yes. Now, with Europe, um, in terms of the association agreement you have with the EU and the prospects of perhaps becoming a full member, is that complicated at all by Brexit? Does it put a delay on those conversations? How does Brexit fit uh, into that scenario? Not really, mm. actually. So uh, we have uh, almost all our largest trade partners are just uh, countries uh, which are in the uh, in, in European Union. Actually, yep. the European Union in, uh, in general is our largest trade partner. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Brexit, so we, it's, it's of course unfortunate for everyone, but uh, we already uh, signed the uh, agreement with with UK, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, covers all the issues which are uh, part of our association agenda as well. So we already have uh, managed to uh, just to manage all those issues with uh, with UK as well. Yes. Not to be affected by the Brexit. All right. OK. Now let's turn to some of um, your domestic issues as well, because, okay. of course, that's something that will no doubt um, concern investors. I mean, you've had um, some violent clashes. Um, the ruling party saying it won't try to change the 2020 voting system. Meanwhile, the US and the EU have urged calm and dialogue over the failure of the electoral reforms. I mean, this might give an impression to international investors of instability in Georgia. So uh, what would be your message over that? And what will you do if the protests continue to escalate? Yeah, so uh, the truth is, first of all, that we don't have this, uh, so the pictures that we are looking on our TV screens, there is not re actually uh, corresponds what's happening in Georgia. So okay. because we are talking uh, uh, about very minor local protests uh, because of the uh, unfortunate failure of uh, uh, of 
some faster moves for the proportional electoral system. But of course, it's not the, a failure to implement the electoral system since we have very free and transparent election uh, consistently and it's uh, internationally proven. So the main issue is and main message from Georgia is that uh, we have the peace and stability in Georgia, so the, uh, any type of clashes that you, you might see are re uh, really of very local nature. And in fact, uh, what we have Georgia, in Georgia com uh, currently, it's 5% uh, uh, GDP growth, which is the uh, highest uh, GDP growth mm -hmm. in the region. Uh, we still have the controlled uh, inflation. We have very good prospects for the, uh, for the investment outlook. And just recently, Standard & Poor have upgraded uh, the Georgia's rating from BB minus to BB, and we had the same uh, investor outlooks from a Fitch agency and so on. So yeah. the prospects are very good in Georgia, so there is no instability. Right. There is a uh, very open uh, economy, uh, it's, and uh, all the uh, uh, all arrangements, all policies uh, yes. which are done in Georgia are focused on the investors and uh, focused on this uh, uh, on Georgia serving as a bridge and place where investors meet, meet Will each Will you give other. in to the protesters' demands, though, if the protests get worse? We are talking about thousands of people at the moment. Uh, we are, uh, of course, the dialogue is, uh, uh, is the only way how we can uh, work with opposition, with the uh, civil, uh, with the civil services, uh, civil uh, sector as well. So the dialogue is the only form that we are following and of course we do not expect any protests uh, to uh, to have uh, some bigger scale of course so everything is uh, peaceful and uh, stable in Georgia and we are open to investors and we don't feel any uh, effect of um, these actions to our economy.